In this little tutorial, I'm just going to show you a couple of my favorite Photoshop plugins that I think will increase and speed up your workflow. Let's get started. So if you don't know anything about Photoshop plugins to begin with, that's fine. We're going to walk you through just a couple of my favorites and then you can potentially go on to discover more yourself. But to know where they are to begin with, in Photoshop CC, we're going to go up to the top toolbar and we'll press plugins. It's got its own dedicated button now. Um, and then we've got options of the plugins panel. We can browse plugins, we can manage plugins. So what we'll actually do to begin with is just go to browse so you can actually see what options are available before we go into a couple that I like to use. Um, so with as with anything in Photoshop or is it anything with Adobe, some will be free, some will be premium options, but they'll all label that out here when you actually look into each of the plugins. Now plugins are effectively third party actions, the automated services, um, really made for a whole range of different things. A lot of them have got descriptions underneath. So there's one here that says it removes background uh, from a subject. So these are little add-ons or extensions, if you want to see it as, uh, that other companies have created that are compatible with Photoshop. With that said, if you've been using plugins for a while, you may find after a little while um, when Adobe have updated Photoshop, some of the plugins aren't compatible anymore. So things like that will disappear but here are the ones currently that are available. So you can kind of buy them, you can download them. They're really, really easy to install. You can just press get and then it'll press okay and it'll install automatically. But there's two in particular that I really, really like to use. So if you're looking for particular Photoshop plugins, all you need to do is just down the side here is just click Photoshop and this will filter out all the other um, plugins that are available for different types um, of Adobe software and these are all the ones that are just designed for Photoshop. So let's say there's a couple in here that I really really like to use. One down here called Free Stock Search. This is fantastic. It's a super way of being able just to search through a couple of the big popular stock sites and download images straight to Photoshop. You don't even have to go onto their website. You don't have to click and go into another window. It's really, really easy. There is also another one about arranging images. I don't know if I can see this. There we go. Arranger for PS, a quick arrangement of layers. So this is a lovely way of being able to lay out multiple layers. Um, so you can create a collage or some sort of set of images quite easily without having and to fiddle around with arrow keys and guidelines, etc. But ultimately, if you want to have a browse through uh, the marketplace of plugins, this is where you find them. So you can go to that plugins menu and go to browse plugins from there. You can go back to manage plugins and this will help you uninstall any that you've got already. But to begin with, we're going to go back to that plugins menu and go to plugin panel. So this will just show you the ones that you've got um, already installed into Photoshop. As I say, these are the two that I use the most. So we're going to kick off with Arranger. Um, I'm just going to close that plugin panel for a minute so we can see. Now Arranger is really, really cool, as I say, for actually kind of setting out images into a display. So I've got three images in the background here. So to make this a little bit more clearer, I'm going to go to File, New, and we'll just get an A4, uh, A4 document. I'm going to turn it Landscape because I've got three portrait orientated images there. And how it works best, and this is, could be really, really good for you to kind of get an understanding as to um, setting images out if you create like creating collages, etc., things like that. So I'm just going to put the image drag each of the images onto this document here. I'm going to try and roughly get them about the same size. I'm really just going to throw them on there without too much thought or position because effectively that's what a range is going to do for us. So now that we've got our layers here, we're just going to minimize the three at the back. Now there are multiple options in terms of how you actually arrange them, be it from a circular pattern to a grid, then we've got this kind of wave shape and then we've got options of being able to put them in columns and, and offsetting those columns. But let's just stick with the simpler ones because if you really, really like to have a look at this a bit further, you can play with it a bit more and try out different designs. So I've got my three um, images here. We've got options of asking us how many columns we want to set. So that's basically going to be how many kind of vertical columns we're going to arrange on our document. Given that we've got three images, I think three columns would be fine. If you've got more images, say if we had six images, we wanted one above another, then say something like that, for example, then all you need to keep in again is three because you just want those three vertical areas. So we've got three images, we've got three columns. It's asking us to set a gutter. So that's effectively the gap between the edge of the image and then around to the edge of the document there. We can either ask it to go in a random order 
or we can base it upon how our layers are structured. So let's just press random for a minute. We're going to select all three layers, so we'll click on the top one and then hold down shift and click the bottom one. You don't need to incorporate the background itself and then simply a case of pressing arrange. Now that's moved all those images based upon the positions of the document here, but it's fine. It's not a major issue there. If you want to tweak those, you can, but all we need to do since we've got our layers all selected still, go into our move tool and we'll just bring it down. So you can see how easily it is to arrange a set of images. Now you don't have to spend too long to actually kind of making sure they're all in line. As long as your images are pretty much all the same size, when you've actually pasted them onto this original document, they'll all end up looking the same there. But you can still go back further. This is more of an arrangement tool than anything else. You can just go back again. You can make one a little bit smaller and then maybe kind of go again and make the other one a bit smaller, but they won't change position in terms of their relative, relative position based upon what you've actually plugged in there with those settings. But I just thought that was a really kind of cool, quick little arrangement tool and being able to set out images so they look a little bit more evenly distributed. So that's the Arranger plugin. Now let's just have a look at another one for a minute. We'll just close that down, we'll close that panel, and we're going to have a look at another one that doesn't need any of the images on screen. This is called Free Stock Search 2. In opening that up, it's going to give us this panel here. Now it's an option that we can either type in, uh, a, type, a, a kind of a, a genre, a subject, an object, and look for photos, vectors, or videos. It gives us an option underneath of which stock sites we're searching for. Um, if you've ever heard of Unsplash and Pixabay and Pexels, you know they're really, really popular because, as it says, they are free to use. They're copyright free and royalty free. So you can select certain ones. You can select all the free ones. You can also include Adobe Stock and Shutterstock, which are premium um, stock sites as well. Then a little bit further down, you've got options of what size of image you'd like to download, whether it be the small, the large, um, or the medium or the even the original going up to the larger ones you'll see some of them may be locked so you may have to actually purchase the, the pro version of this uh, stock plugin here so we've got the word car there so let's just search for beach or something like that and then we've got some images here so we can make the tool a little bit larger so we can actually see all our images here a little bit more clearly and we can just scroll down and say for example we wanted that image since in the case of clicking on it and there it is straight away we've not had to move to uh, another workspace or open up a web window or anything like that it's literally all in photoshop there so if we've got our beach there now if we want a plane you know if we were creating a composite of images etc then we can go through look for one that's actually relative and suitable based upon our document etc there and so we can get more results so we can just keep searching through and again we've not changed into a web uh, browser or anything like that at all we're just opening up those images straight into Photoshop straight away that we can edit them. So there we go. It's a really, really helpful tool, whether you're using things like a free stock searcher or you want to arrange images into a certain order. It's completely down to you.